I bought this one ounce parcel of Cooper PD Opal at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show in 2014. I bought it because some of the pieces had the finger-like pattern of opal flash that you sometimes see in Ethiopian opal. Now, I was a relative rookie at the time, and I didn't think that finding this pattern in Australian opal was a very big deal. I figured that it must be seen in all types of opal. But in 2016, Justin Thomas of Black Opal Direct stunned the opal world by presenting this amazing black opal, which he named the Rainbow Serpent. Now, just how impressed was Justin? Well, he named it the Rainbow Serpent. And the Rainbow Serpent is an Australian Aboriginal mythologic figure who is believed to have created everything on Earth. In other words, the Rainbow Serpent is essentially God. So he named this opal God, and he uses a picture of it in his YouTube profile. So I'd say that he was pretty impressed. Okay, let's start cutting some of this stuff. There are a lot of nice pieces here, but I think that it's easy to see the 800-pound gorilla in the room, if you know what I mean. This one has long columns with beautiful colors. I hate to have to cut it. No, I don't. Sheila, stand aside. Now this is starting to look like I expected it to be. You see, the person who sold me this had gone over it with a flex shaft, a Dremel-like tool, and that dulled the surface, making it tough to see the color. Now as I turn this, I'm beginning to see something interesting, right there. You see that second color bar? It's a little lighter and sitting right on top of the other one. Photonic colloid crystals of precious opal are known to have the quality of epitaxy which means that they grow new crystals on top of existing ones. Oh, I I forgot. Sheila, I'm sorry. I told her I'd cut back on the big words. I I take it back, Sheila. Forget I ever said epitaxy. Well, it turns out that this pattern of parallel columns of color is very rare in Australian opal. Maybe that's why Justin was so excited. By the way, the scientific term for an individual column is prismatic photonic colloidal crystal. I mean, I thought you should know. Well, that's a really fancy name, and I like it, but this pattern of finger-like processes already has a name. The digit pattern. With Australian opal, you're just not looking for this column-like pattern. Some people call it a finger-like pattern. So, in gathering things together for this video, I discovered a number of opals with this pattern. All of them were from a single parcel of gem grade and a matrix opal that I did a video about five years ago. So, let's get one of those suckers out and cut it now. Interrupt this video for an important public service announcement from the Pulitzer Opal Deep Science Investigational Unit. Because of unprecedented viewer interest, Pulitzer Opal once again encourages the use of the interjection skrr in comments and in other forms of communication on this channel. Thank you. These pure white untreated cabochons and after treating skrr. That's the new expression used by cool young people these days. It takes the place of wowza and golly gee, which are now considered to be uncool. So if you want to be cool and don't mind sounding like a pirate imitating a dragster, use it. Skrr. This is a previously treated piece of Andamooka Matrix Opal that appears to have this digit pattern. And a true digit pattern in Australian Opal should look like these colorful lines. And where they end, there should be a pinfire appearance. That appears to be what we see here. So I'm going to decide how to cut this to get the most out of it, and we'll see how the final cabochon looks. Sometimes you plan and plan and plan and plan, and after all of that, you just end up winging it. and still more planning. Sometimes you just have to put things aside and let nature take its course. Well, I've just got a few more things to finish up. Just a little cutting, grinding, (laughs) sawing and stuff. Yep, looks like I'm finished.
And now for the final stones. There are just too many stones today to give a description of each one. I want people to have enough time to see the so-called science section, because that is where I show what scientists have recently discovered, that all precious opal on Earth starts as digit pattern opal. But in some places, like Australia, that pattern is mostly destroyed and replaced by other patterns, the ones we're familiar with. The destruction of digit pattern opal in Australia is why it's so extremely rare. And if you don't believe it, just ask Justin. Now don't get excited. Skipper is a doublet that I made with a small fragment of very colorful opalized clamshell. I will be giving Skipper to one of you guys. I'm putting the ugly twins aside. I'm going to send them to Roy of Roy's Rocks. He'll know what to do with them. Zod is a beautiful example of Australian Digit Opal. Remember, Australian Digit Opal is extremely rare. Just ask Justin. Blackfish is a large, amazing-looking example of the digit pattern in Andamooka Matrix Opal. Is he better than Zot? I don't know, but Zot is more rare. I'll explain in a minute. The person who sent me this photo had this for sale for $100,000. Now for the winners of the Pipe Opals from the last video. The names were supplied by you guys. The winner of Mrs. Pipes is... Nixie. The winner of Sandy is... Wondercat. And the winner of Lilac is Andrea Groves. And the winner of Leaky is Tim Kazier. Welcome to the deep science section of the video. I must say up front that my knowledge of this is derived mostly from articles by Dr. Simon Peekover of Pan Gem Resources Australia. It turns out that making opal is actually not very difficult. There are two recent YouTube videos that show how to do it. You just mix your chemicals together and pour them in a dish. After a period of time, this is what happens. This newly formed opal arranges itself into columns of color, all by itself. These columns are where the best opal can be found in synthetic opal, because if you look at the columns from the top or the bottom, you either have a pinfire pattern or a lizard skin pattern. The pinfire pattern is boring, and the lizard skin pattern wouldn't fool anybody. Watch. Sheila. What is this? Colonel, that's Australian opal. Thanks for helping, Sheila. Well, you may ask, why do we see this columnar arrangement of color often in Ethiopian opal and rarely in Australian? Well, let's just say it's complicated. But for you scientists who are interested, I will explain it to the best of my knowledge. But for now, let's just say that some of the things that you know about opal formation are completely wrong. In Ethiopian opal, the opal forms within bubbles left by gases in cooled volcanic magma flows. Each Ethiopian opal is fundamentally round, and there are no flat plates of opal like one sees in Australian seam opal. I mean, there are no seams. And guess what? There are no color bars in Ethiopian opal. Silica-laden water does manage to find its way into the gas-filled spaces within the volcanic rock matrix, and the silica deposited in these spaces as a colloidal gel eventually forms opal. The opal formed occurs in the same manner that it did with our synthetic opal demonstration, all by itself, and this is the way that all precious opal forms in every location around the world. Because each nodule of Ethiopian opal is in its own space and surrounded by rock matrix, the opal is rarely ever disturbed by outside forces, so the columns of color that form are retained once the opal is fully formed. Now, if you cut the opal perpendicular to the columns, you get the well-formed honeycomb pattern, particularly if you cut near the tips. If you cut the fingers further down, you'll get the honeycomb pattern, but the honeycomb walls are thinner and the fingertips are more colorful. But my personal favorite way of cutting Ethiopian opal is to cut parallel to the fingers so that the very colorful columns of opal are exposed. This is what I did with this great opal specimen years ago. I exposed the columnar pattern and it's really beautiful. And it looks very much like Justin's rainbow serpent. Australian scientists have done a great job of figuring out a lot of things that we did not know about the formation of Australian opal. Now, I'm not a geologist and my knowledge of rheology and flow mechanics is... Well, limited, but I can handle this. I'm a scientist, right? You see, all opal starts off as columns of photonic colloidal opal, and Australian opal is no different. But if that is the case, why is the column pattern so rare? It's because things were pretty wild in Australia millions of years ago, at least geologically. 
I hate to have to tell you this, but our old theories about opal formation are incorrect. The theory that silica-rich water filled the spaces within sedimentary rock and, over time, the colloidal suspension hardened into opal. That's wrong. Recently, scientific endeavors have revealed what actually happened. Colloidal silica gels under hydrostatic pressure due to tectonic forces blasted into the sedimentary rock and formed their own seams. They don't need no stinking pre-existing seams. Initially, this primordial opal was deposited in column-like patterns, as it is elsewhere, but the process wasn't over. More colloidal silica moved in and mowed down these columns, leaving them horizontal and broken. The flow also tore off pieces of sedimentary rock and carried them inside the seam. Every opal cutter loves sand, right? Of course. When the flow of opal reached the end of a seam, it would reverse, and the new flow created shear lines that we see as color bars. And because of the turbulence, the precise grid-like deposition pattern of silica spheres was disrupted, leaving only potch. Bummer! So, although many seams still had lots of opal color, they now had lots of potch and sand. Now, I know what you're thinking. If the beautiful columns of color, the prismatic photonic colloidal crystals, were destroyed, why do we occasionally find opal with that pattern in Australia? The answer is that some of the newly formed opal found its way into places that were protected from being disturbed. Justin found one, right? And there's this batch from Cooperpedi that I cut in this video. And what about all those pieces of Andamooka matrix that I showed with beautiful columnar patterns? Perhaps the density of the limestone matrix helped protect it from waves of opal flow. Well, I obviously don't know the answer, but I'm certain that the columnar patterns that we see today are the result of being preserved because they were deposited in areas that were protected from waves of opal flow. In Virgin Valley, Nevada, most of the opal is wood opal, and I presume that the wood itself somehow protected the columnar patterns, at least in some of the wood. Brazilian opal is like Australian in that it forms in sedimentary rock. It could well be that there are waves of opal flow, but there's no scientific data available about this possibility. But I believe that opal that retains the columnar pattern is somehow undisturbed from outside forces wherever it forms in the world. Colonel, that's Australian opal. Don't you recognize it? You sometimes play with it, right? Well, Sheila, I do sometimes play with it. Well, for anybody who's still hanging around, I assume that you're either a science nut or just a nut. The names that I used for this process were primordial pattern, digit pattern, finger-like pattern, column-like pattern, prismatic photonic colloidal crystal pattern, and possibly others. So what shall we call it formally? Well, as a scientist who has published a number of articles in scientific journals, I must tell you that it is customary for the author who first describes a given entity to give it a name. And therefore, we should use what Dr. Rondeau and colleagues called it back in 2013, the digit pattern. In other areas of the world, the pattern is a little less finger-like, but it's obviously the same process. So digit pattern is it, as far as I'm concerned. So another episode is in the books, and I will see you next time. Leave a comment to enter today's giveaways. Prismatic photonic colloidal crystal. This is not as complex as it sounds. Prismatic just means where the crystal length is greater than the width. It can also mean prism-like. Photonic just means having to do with photons, in other words, light. Colloidal means gel-like, where particles are suspended within another substance. Crystal is an ordered arrangement of atoms and molecules, and in this case, we're talking about silica spheres.